Okay, my haptic is going off. There we go. Okay, so I put it back into full gyro mode because the wind is coming right over this lane where I'm parked off of. So let's see if we can glide it in here in gyro mode and set it down not too hard. Oh, that wasn't bad. Now, that wasn't me, that was the gyro. But what an awesome job it did. Welcome to Ground Control. Okay, you already saw one of my landings with this Ishin Flying Fish in full stabilization mode using the Bimane Gyro. And you saw how nice and sweet that came in, um, how well it counteracted the wind, and, and um, how well it kept the wings level coming in to that little rough dirt lane that I landed on. I am uh, I'm so impressed with this plane. If you guys have watched any of my prior flight videos and my reviews of this plane, I think this is the absolute best factory micro plane that I've had an opportunity to fly so far. And I have flown a lot of factory micro planes. But on this plane, they just seem to get everything right. I mean, it has it has fantastic amount of power on it. It's very maneuverable. It's aerobatic. Um, it it can fly fast. It can fly slow. So it's got a pretty wide flight envelope on it, and you get a lot of flight time with it. Now, I I want it, I've only taken this out once in in some significant wind, and tested out the Biome A gyro in the mode where it counteracts wind and wind gusts, and it worked fantastic. So we've got quite a bit of wind out there today, and it's pretty gusty. You know, on the ground, the wind was between six to ten miles per hour, and you, you'll be able to hear it in my uh, in my camera mic. And that's on the ground. And typically, when you get twenty to thirty feet up out there, where it's, you're, you're getting close to the top of the foothills, the wind is usually significantly more than that. What you're feeling on the ground. So. I wanted to take this out and I wanted to demonstrate it again uh, with the Biome Gyro and one of the things I love about these Biome Gyros is there's, there's no setup on them at all. They're, they're plug and play gyros. They're four channel, they're small, they're lightweight. I've got one installed in this plane. I've tested it in three different planes so far, four channel planes. It's worked fantastic. And every one that I've tried it in, I also tried it in a, in a 1.2 meter plane. So these these Biome gyros are not just for micro planes; they will work in larger planes as well. The receiver that I'm using is a W Fly. It's an RF 201S. It's an S bus and PPM receiver. It has diversity antennas. And if I remember correctly, I think it comes with two different cables. One is a has a micro cable on one end of it. But one thing I like about that receiver as well is they included a cable that has a standard servo connector on the end of it so that you can plug it, you don't have to have an adapter or anything. You can plug it right into a gyro that has a standard PWM ports on it. So that, may, that makes that receiver and gyro both just plug and play. All right, so it didn't come with the landing gear. I, I, I had, because of the area that I have to land in, I needed landing skids or landing gear. So I decided to put a tripod landing gear on this one. I just fabricated it. But that has worked out really, really well. Now, when I want you to see the amount of power that this plane has during this flight. And that is after adding 17 grams of landing gear to this plane. And the other thing is, the batteries that I'm using in this, this is a Nanotech 3S 950 milliamp hour 25C LiPo, so it can supply around 23 amps of power, which is plenty for this little plane. And 950 milliamp hours not only gives, does it give me a lot of power for the plane, but it also gives me really good flight time and it fits really nicely inside the fuselage. And it's really easy to get your CG with it which is another thing I like about those light bows. And I've got one right here. 
And this one weighs 65.7 grams, 950 milliamp hour. And this plane does not have any problems whatsoever carrying this 950 milliamp hour um, 3S LiPo. The other thing I, I want to show you during this flight session is, is how benign the stalls are on it. So one of, the, one of the things I like to do with this plane because it's so forgiving and it's so stable is I like to rock it vertically and then just cut the throttle and, and kick the elevator back just a little bit to where, the, where it'll just rotate a little bit and then drop its nose and fall through. And so I think I did that a couple of times during this flight. And then I also um, climbed vertically with it and then cut the throttle and just kicked the rudder over so it would do a nice stall turn as it was coming back down. But um, just to show you um, how well behaved and, and how stable this plane is, you know, uh, flying fast, flying slow, it, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's absolutely a fantastic plane. It's, it's still very inexpensive. I'll have links to everything in the show notes. The battery, the SBUS PPM receiver that I'm using, the uh, BIM A and BIM D gyro, if you're, if you're interested in the BIM D gyro as well, which is um, designed for, it's a three channel, it's designed for Elevon mix, like for a wing. But um, I will meet you out at the field, we'll put this in the air, and, and I'll show you what I mean about this plane and this gyro and this S-Bus PPM receiver. This, all these work so well together. I have not had a single issue with them and I have got a lot of flights on this plane with the with the Biome gyro and also the WFly S-Bus PPM receiver. As a fair, both of those units are fairly inexpensive. So if you haven't considered those before, if you haven't seen them before, um, follow the links in the show notes and at least take a look at them including this plane. This, this, I, I'm not joking when I say this is the best plane, sub 250 gram micro plane that I've flown so far. So I'll see you out the field. All right, let's get the flying fish back in the air again. All right, so I increased my dual rate on my elevator and my ailerons. They're all maxed out on dual rate now. I just felt like I didn't have enough in reserve in the elevator and I felt like the roll rate was a little slow. So we got significant wind out here so I'm going to launch it in gyro mode. Launching. And let's run a circuit here in gyro mode. Going downwind now. Turn it into turn back into the wind and then we'll put it into the mode that just counteracts wind okay so we are in the mode now that just counteracts wind no restrictions and this this radio link by my gyro does a fantastic job of counteracting the wind in this mode it's awesome all right so let's see our roll right now yeah, that's better. I think I can live with that. Alright, now well, the elevator doesn't feel twitchy at all, so... Yeah, feels like I have a little bit in reserve. I may change the linkage on the elevator and the ailerons. Just to get a little bit more coming into the wind. Isn't that an awesome plane? Alright, let's try another loop. Split S. Yeah, I think I'd like a little more elevator on it. Got some wind picking up now. Look how, <laughs> look how slowly you can fly it into the wind here. 
crosswind. Turning into the wind again. Look at that power. Isn't that awesome? Now I'm using a lot of rudder today, so I don't have to bank it as hard in this wind. Awesome. Look at that. Look how stable. I don't know. I'm sure you guys can hear the wind in my camera. And look how well that gyro is operating. That is fantastic. It makes a it makes a seven to eight mile an hour wind feel like a two to three. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I would like a little more elevator for things like that. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good roll. It must have had plenty of wind on its nose. Let's try it in the opposite direction. Ah, not as quick to the left. Well, we got twin motors, so there shouldn't be any... Obviously, there's not going to be any torque issues with that. Hmm. <laughs> I just about, I just cut, cut the throttle almost completely on that climb. Let's do that again, just to see. Check that out. That was a complete stall there. Recovered nicely, didn't it? <laughs> I just climbed and then uh, cut, cut back on the throttle and kicked the rudder over. Let's try that again. Check that out. That is awesome. Like I said, it is a very, very well-behaved plane, even in this wind. <laughs> That is so cool. Now you guys know why I recommend this so highly. Okay, about ready to run out of time. Alright, put it back in the gyro mode. We've got to land it on this little dirt lane that I parked off of. That's where the wind is coming from. So let's see if we can float it in here. Hopefully the wind will pick up while we're coming in. Way out there. Alright, let's see if we can float it in. Now the wind is slacking off. Thank you, wind. <laughs> and it picked up right there at the end. <laughs> Go figure, huh? Oh well. <laughs> the wind let go, and I thought I was going to be able to set it down like 20 feet back. And then it just decided to pick back up again. Alright. 
Uh, anyway, what a fun, fun little plane. They just, they hit, they, you know, you, they checked every box with this one. What can I say? I mean, it is absolutely a fantastic flying, handling uh, little plane, tons of power, very aerobatic. You saw, what, three, three stalls, vertical stalls with it? One was just straight up and then cutting the power, uh, rotating the ele with rotating it just slightly with the elevator, and it was a non-issue. And then I climbed vertically, cut the power, and then just kicked the rudder over. And I think I did that twice. And it, and you saw how benign the stalls were on this plane. Absolutely fantastic. And this Radio Link Bime Gyro. I can't say enough about it either. So you take that gyro and pair it up with this plane and it is absolutely fantastic, even in the wind. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.